Hello all, welcome and good evening to all of you. Good evening, Dr. Anand. Good evening, Abhishek. Thanks a lot. Welcome everyone. Today we have a very big day. Yes, a very, very big day. And we are happy to inform you that Dr. Christian Coachman is with us tonight. He is the founder and CEO of Digital Smile Design. Welcome, Dr. Coachman, to the show. Hello, everybody. Great to be here. Okay. Great to be connecting with India again. Uh, it's a pleasure and an honor. I'm happy to be with my dear friend uh, Rajiv. And I want to thank you all for the opportunity. Good evening, well, Dr. Rajiv, sir. Welcome to the show. Good evening. I think there is a show every weekend of mine on something. <laughs> so, so no need to introduce me, please. <laughs> sir, you are a rock star. <laughs> Good. So with that, can I take over, Anand? Yes, please, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All yours. So first of all, to begin with, thank you, World Dental Association. Uh, Christian World Dental Association happens to be registered by these two young guys. And uh, that was nine years ago. And that's very interesting. And this lockdown gave them the fame across the globe, literally across the globe, you know. So there are doctors joining from I don't know which country today. We will come to know it, of course, later on. But it's very interesting what this young generation is doing. Very, very interesting. I'm enjoying with them. That's for sure. So thank you, WDA, for everything, as usual, Abhishek, Anand, and the whole team for having Dr. Coachman and having me to interview him today, because the last time it was, I had a coffee with Coachman. Yeah. So now yeah. we will have a chai with Coachman, okay? Good. Well, now, so, now it's uh, tea uh, with Rajiv. Tea with Rajiv. So you got that, you got the uh, translation of chai perfectly. <laughs> Good. So welcome to all the participants. And I could see Dr. Aslam Inamdar, even Christian knows Aslam very well, was the first participant to, I think, roll in for today's program. And I, people are just joining. They take little time to enter. So thank you, all of you. Thank you to all our old DSD course participants from India and from the Gulf region mainly uh, for uh, being with us since 2012. So that's a long journey for DSD in India. And I know many of you uh, left DSD in between, but for which I put a post today on Facebook. I can understand why you could not follow DSD. The reason is probably at every turn, you could not delegate your regular clinical work to your associate dentists and consultants, and you could not find time to do it yourselves. But you have to look at me at this age. Also, I'm retired today, as I, everybody knows. I, I'm still following the concept. And for the last eight years, I've been doing it. And if you observe now Aslam Inamdar, Dr. Aslam is now has taken over completely and he's also doing extremely well. So if you persist with DSD, there is nothing like DSD. And if you are following Dr. Coachman online, DSD, what started as a concept 10 years ago is mine probably, is today a industry of its own. So if you believe in something in life and if you devote and dedicate your time and energy in one thing, See, this is where we can reach. And Dr. Coachman is a proof of my last three lectures on life as a BDS, life as a MDS, and life after 10, 25 years. And that was the perfect timing for me to invite him today. So now let me talk about Dr. Coachman. The first meeting with him was 2012 October. in uh, in uh, That was in Florence, in Italy, yes. at Dr. Andrea Ricci's place, the palace. And uh, from there, it all started. And then we invited Christian to India in 2012 for a mega program at Goa, which I think everybody enjoyed. And uh, after that, again, an opportunity in 2015 for the DSD World Tour, which was, which was again a great occasion. After that, I have been telling everybody I have no guts to invite Christian again, unless he decides to come complimentary for me. Yeah. Because my wife, Minakshi, refuses to take that risk in life and she says, no, you are not calling him again because that stress of getting participants in India until the last moment, bloody nobody pays the course fee is a nightmare for an organizer. So I agree in future, if you're flying by from Australia to Madrid or something, I will ask you to drop in between in India for a day or two. 
So with that, I think uh, let's hand over the uh, whole thing to Christian now. One small thing before I go further, the person sitting in front of you is a sixth generation dentist of the Coachman family. And that's the most, I mean, I think a touching thing for me when I visited his father's clinic in some years ago. And again, when I visited last year, it's, it's, I mean, I, I, this is an opportunity in the world. I think everybody needs to visit this clinic because it's the Mecca Medina. It's, it's, it's like the place to worship, I think in dentistry for sure. And I'm lucky, blessed with that. So with that, I think Christian, it's all for you and uh, you can speak something. And then my question number one comes for you. No, it's, uh, as I mentioned, it's a pleasure to to be with you, Rajiv, to, to chat with you always. You also been an inspiration uh, for me uh, with your leadership and your wisdom. Uh, it was an honor for me to have you in our course uh, in 2012 and then several other opportunities to have you sitting with us and, and, and investing time on our ideas. That really means a lot to me. Uh, it was a great honor, of course, to, to, to be in Goa on that very special course that we did in Goa um, and, and to repeat that in Mumbai afterwards and, and to get to know India. Uh, I really believe India is a special country in this crazy world with special people, caring people uh, and, and really kind and passionate people. I, I hope, as I mentioned to you before, Rajiv, I think the world has so much to learn from Indian culture and from Indian behavior uh, beyond dentistry. It's uh, the human behavior, uh, the spirituality, and the kindness that we see in every person that comes from India. So for me, it's always a pleasure to contribute, to try to share, and to try to help. So. It's, I'm here for you and uh, I will give my best to try to share ideas uh, that are helpful. You know, being pragmatic, being straight to the point, being clear about uh, things that we can do to help our patients better. Perfect. So friends, all those who are listening, uh, we will have this program in two parts. Part one is today. And part two is on uh, Thursday, 11th of June. And that's exactly one week from now, same time, same place. So to begin with, what we have done is today we have three questions for Christian. Then we will have a 15 minute question and answer session, which is open for all, which will be the questions will be read out by Abhishek and Anand for Christian. And then I will take over and talk of the part two, what we are going to cover. So today's three questions. The first question to begin with Christian for you, a very simple question on my survey with most doctors wrote to me was, sir, actually, what is DSD? The same question was asked to me in 2012, 2015 and every time. And of course, today also there's a whole new generation of dentists in India because the India dentists, 30,000 dentists are born in India every year. <laughs> okay, literally. And uh, the question is again, what is DSD? Yes, uh, we definitely understand why people ask this question because uh, it's not a straightforward, simple answer. You know, uh, if uh, if DSD was just a software, or 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 if DSD was one specific technique, uh, if DSD was one product, uh, if DSD was one idea, it would be easy to explain. Uh, but DSD is not one thing. It started uh, as in one way, it evolved, and I'm gonna try to explain briefly. It's it's not easy, but it's not that complicated to explain what is DSD. Um, DSD to start with needs to be explained in two ways. And when everybody when somebody asks me what is DSD, I always answer with another question. Which DSD are you talking about? Because we need to divide uh, first DSD in two different DSDs. There is the DSD methodology and there is the DSD company. The DSD methodology are a bunch of ideas and strategies and workflows that combine 
creates a whole method of how to run our dental office. Uh, and these ideas are being shared since 10 years. Uh, some lectures are giving pieces of the ideas. Some courses are giving all the ideas. And there are people talking about pieces of DSD all over the world. Uh, and these ideas are there for anybody to use. So the DSD methodology is a bunch of ideas that people can learn and use all over the world. And the other DSD is the DSD company. The DSD company is the company that was born after the DSD ideas. So DSD ideas started 12 years ago. DSD company started uh, six years ago. So six years ago, the DSD company started with products and services to help people use the DSD ideas. So DSD ideas, DSD company, okay? So uh, to learn the DSD methodology, the DSD ideas, we need to divide the DSD concept into five blocks of ideas. Design, plan, present, perform, and promote. So what is the DSD methodology? The DSD methodology is several strategies using technology and communication. These are the two main tools of DSD, technology and communication. So these two tools to help us become better with design, plan, present, perform and promote. So summarizing, DSD is a bunch of strategies that use technology and better communication systems to improve, improve number one, facial analysis and smile design, pillar number one. Technology and communication systems to improve diagnosis and treatment planning. That's number two. Number three, Technology and communication systems to improve the way we present our treatment plan to the patient. That's number three. Number four, communicate uh, technology and communication systems to improve the way we perform dentistry, digital dentistry. That's number four. Number five, technology and communication systems to improve the way we promote and market our dental office. So that's why we cannot say that DSD is this or DSD is that. It's a bunch of things. Now, it's a bunch of ideas. Some of the ideas were created and developed by us. Some of the ideas were created and developed by mentors that we adapted. Some ideas were created by others and we improved. Some ideas, we just translated the ideas by using technology into something better. So it's a mix of ideas. So it's not some just things that I invented, but it mainly know-how that was out there that I connected and created a protocol, a system of how to implement this in the office. So uh, uh, at the beginning, from these five pillars, DSD was basically one pillar only. When I started 12 years ago, DSD was all about using Keynote and PowerPoint to design better smiles, period. That's how it started 12 years ago. I was a technician smile designer and I wanted to improve the way I was designing smiles. So today we are five pillars. 12 years ago was basically one. How to transform Keynote and PowerPoint into a dental software to help you analyze faces and design better smiles. Period. That was one. Right after that, since one of my passions always been treatment planning, functional treatment planning, right after I started to use Keynote and PowerPoint to design better smiles, I started to improve the concept to help me improve also diagnosis and treatment planning, basically using Dropbox and WhatsApp to improve team communication and treatment planning. So I realized that my designs to improve smile design were great for me to design better smiles, but I didn't want just to be better as a smile designer. I wanted the treatment planning team to be better. I wanted the restorative dentist, 
the orthodontist, the periodontist. So I wanted them to look at my drawings, brainstorm about my drawings, and treatment plan and improve their treatment plan because of my drawings. So I wanted to be to bring facial analysis and smile design to the interdisciplinary team. And then I started the second pillar. And I realized that the second pillar needed to improve communication. The problem was not the know-how of the specialist, but was to connect me to the specialist. So that's why uh, number two, improving diagnosis and treatment planning is basically improved by the communication systems that I developed and the communication protocols that I developed, basically using, again, other people's softwares. Uh, Dropbox and WhatsApp became my tool. So now, BSD became two things, design better smile and treatment plan better cases by using what? Keynote PowerPoint, Dropbox, and WhatsApp. Yeah. So that was phase two. And uh, then, then quickly after that, I'm talking about in one year, we moved into three. And three is present better your case. Three is emotional dentistry. Three is what made DSD explode all over the world, was when we started to develop techniques, now that we design great smiles and we treatment plan great cases, we deserve to wow the patient. We deserve the patient to value what we are doing. So emotional dentistry is the third pillar, present, design plan present. Emotional dentistry means all the strategies that we started to develop to make the patient give us the value that we deserve when we present the plan to them. When we show them the plan and when we show them how much it's going to cost, we want that patient to respect that and to say, I respect this. The treatment plan is amazing. I want that smile design. I'm going to change my priorities. I'm going to create a way to find the money and pay for this because this is the best thing for me. This is emotional dentistry. And this is, again, several strategies. What is the most famous strategy in emotional dentistry in BSD? The motivational marker. The motivational marker is a piece of emotional dentistry that is a piece of the whole DSD workflow. It's a piece of the third pillar, present better, value yourself, case acceptance. Case acceptance is number two. So when you met me, when you met me in Florence, when you met me in Florence, DSD was at the third layer. In 2012, the course that we gave in Florence explained very well how to use Keynote PowerPoint to design better smiles, how to use Dropbox and WhatsApp to communicate better and treatment plan better, and how to do emotional dentistry with the uh, motivational mockup and doing the photographies and the post uh, pre, uh, before and afters and the emotional DSD presentation. That was the course that became famous all over the world in 2011, 12, 13, and then 2014 and 15 with the world tour. This was the course, design, plan, and sell. Design, plan, and sell. We're still missing two. We're still missing two pillars. So in 2015, we didn't stop. We continued to evolve. And then the 3D technology became reality. DSD moved to Spain. DSD partnered up with a company called Nemotech. And with Nemotech, we were able to translate all our ideas into 3D. Now, when we moved into 3D, we, not, we, we improved number one, smile design and facial analysis. We did improve number two, treatment planning with 3D technology. And we did improve number three, creating case acceptance with 3D presentations to the patient. But in 2014, when we entered 3D technology, we brought also the fourth pillar. Because with 3D technology, we finally could translate the DSD pro project into the actual treatment guided dentistry, digital quality control. That's when we started to develop the DSD click guides for all on four, the DSD perio guide with double crown lengthening guide, the DSD direct guides for direct composite, 
the DSD natural restoration for the restorative workflow, the DSD splints for orthognatic, the DSD uh, guides for uh, tooth prep guides, and, and all the guides that we developed to translate the DSD smile design into the treatment. So that's when DSD entered digital dentistry world with 3D technology, and that is the fourth pillar, perform, execute, dentistry with 3D technology. And then finally, the fifth pillar, and the fifth pillar is promote. The fifth pillar is marketing. Marketing for the last 10 years became one of my passions. And when we realized that one, two, three, and four were so powerful, and people were coming from all over the world to learn on the residency, DSD residency started in 2016. And the big difference between the DSD World Tour up to 15 and the residency in, 15, in 16 is because the residency was completely 3D. No more hand wax ups, no more keynotes and PowerPoints. We had our DSD app, we had our 3D technology, we had a complete digital workflow, and we could execute digital dentistry at the highest level, and that was great. We realized that people were coming to us and people wanted help to go back home and promote to their communities that they were special because they were doing one, two, three, and four. And that's when we started five. In 2017, we partnered up with Brandon McDonald. We merged and DSD became a marketing agency that we are very proud to say, definitely one of the best marketing agencies in the dental business for sure. And this marketing agency is specialized on helping dentists to promote to their clients and promote to their patients and promote to their community why they are special because of DSD. If you are doing one, two, three, and four, how can you make your community fall in love with your work and come to you, not to the other people, because you're doing one, two, three, and four? So this is the fifth pillar, promote. So basically, this is DSD. And the DSD company is working on these five pillars as well, helping people with services, and products to make all these five pillars happen through the DSD planning center, the DSD app, the DSD lab, and the DSD consultancy and the DSD marketing agency. These are the five products, the five services that we have today in the DSD company. That's it. You're muted. They muted me actually, yes. Now, to repeat, oh my God. DSD 2011, when I heard you for the first time, 2012, Florence, and then on and on and on. All my DSD participants from India who have been listening to me, I hope at least today you realize that you have missed the train. Today you would have had such an USP in your practice that you would be beyond competition. So I think today I take this opportunity and me and Christian would love to invite all those 300, 400 participants of ours back into the family. And today India is fully digital. We know that there are innumerable CAD CAM machines in India, lots of dentists and labs, almost every lab has a 3D printer. So we are actually ready for it, ready. There are specialized lab like Dr. Aslam's lab for the digital workflow. And there's a DSD planning center lab started by Dr. Coachman himself in multiple places globally. So we can, I think it's high time everybody entered into this. And uh, all those who are listening by now, some of the ones who are listening it for the first time may have got confused with these five things, which I can relate instantly with Christian. But frankly speaking, they are not so difficult. There is always a learning curve in life in everything. Even if you learned implants, you'll have to spend that little learning curve. But today with the new concept of the DSD app, which is AI up to date and ready, no more PowerPoint, no more keynote. Life is in five minutes, literally, you can design somebody's smile. 
another five minutes and probably a treatment plan, another another few minutes and a 3D printed probably a DSD shell or a test drive in a PMMA, another few minutes and then perform because of the CAD CAM because of the guides surgical guides of every kind on every subject in dentistry and then perform in the mouth and then get the products produced from a CAD CAM machine. I think everything is, I think, fallen in place. It's a hard journey, Christian, 10, 12 years of hard work. But I love one thing of yours, which I have been teaching the young generation in India always persist on only one dream in life. Make it a vision, make it a mission, make it a vision. Achieve, set your goals and you will achieve it one day. And you are one classic example of all what I speak. I am really, really honored to have you today. So let's friends go a little ahead. And uh, can you Christian uh, give them the concept because this is the second thing what everybody asks me. So what is this wow factor what they talk about? You know, emotional dentistry means does the patient actually cry in the clinic or what happens? Because we have seen these videos and things like that. And sir, what is this test drive concept? And is it different from a concept called the old concept called mock-up? Yeah. So if you can put a little three, four minutes, five minutes into it mm -hmm. and explain test drive or if you have a laptop and if it's ready, a show two, three test drives before afters, that also is fine. Or you can show it in the next uh, uh, part two. No, I can. I think I can explain uh, with, with words here very in a very clear way. So you asked about the wow effect and you asked about uh, the motivational mockup, the smile test drive. Um, uh, what is what is the mockup, the conventional mockup, a motivational mockup and so on. So uh, I think the best way to explain uh, this question is that on the DSD journey, on, on uh, the patient's journey in a dental office, we usually divide this journey in two moments. Uh, from uh, when the patient uh, books the appointment with you or start to think about booking the appointment or even before that, when the patient hears your name for the first time, when the patient considers maybe coming to you, that's when the journey starts. Uh, and then there is a journey that brings somebody that doesn't know you to consider coming to you, to get to know your office, to maybe Google you, to go to your website, to check your website, to hear about you from a friend, uh, word of mouth, uh, to compare you to others, to check the solutions, to follow you on social media, uh, to meet you in a party, on a social event, all the way to the moment that the patient said, the person says, okay, first, I realize I need a dentist. Second, I want uh, to find a dentist. Third, I think this is my dentist. Fourth, Call the office, talk to the front desk, book the appointment. So there's, it's a big journey. It's a long journey all the way to coming to the first appointment, walking into your office, experiencing your office, the front desk, the waiting room, the smell, the place, the tea, the coffee, uh, the behavior, the attitude, uh, you know, the music, uh, the light. Everything is part of the journey all the way to the first appointment with the doctor, meeting the doctor, shaking hands, listening to the doctor, chatting with the doctor, explaining the concerns, opening the mouth for the first time. It's a big moment of this journey. You know, allowing the doctor this honor to look in the patient's mouth. You know, this privacy invasion that happens when you look into somebody's mouth. So the person is giving this allowance uh, that goes to the first appointment. And then you have the experience of the clinical exam the touch of the hands, the, the posture, the energy, the look in the eyes, you know, the procedures, how comfortable it is, you know, how you ask the right questions, how do you make the notes, uh, do you make an impression, do you make a scan, do you take pictures, how many pictures, uh, what kind of information, how uncomfortable it is to take the x-rays, this is all part of the journey. All the way to the point that you finish the first appointment, you give some information, you uh, ask for a second appointment to give the treatment plan, you prepare yourself for that, you convince the patient to come back, hopefully the patient comes back, listens to your plan, uh, you present your financial proposition, uh, and all the way to the end of the first half 
of the journey. That is when case acceptance happens. So the DSD journey from when the patient gets to know you all the way to the end of the treatment is divided in two. And the moment that the patient accepts your treatment, case acceptance is the division right in the middle. So everything that I just explained is part one of the journey. From when they know you to when they say yes to your plan. Then case acceptance is the division. And then part two starts. Part two is actually the treatment. Appointment after appointment. The experience of each procedure. Uh, the follow-ups. The quality control. The explanations. The things that go wrong. The things that go right. The fixing. The adjusting. The rescheduling. All the way to finishing one uh, procedure, second procedure, third procedure. And hopefully finish the whole treatment. All the way to putting the patient into maintenance and then maybe hygiene sessions, all the way to the moment that the patient becomes a maintenance patient and hopefully a big fan. So why I'm explaining this? Because every single DSD strategy, every single DSD product is divided in these two moments. So when we talk about wow effect, wow effect is what we do to wow the patient in every one of these moments. You want to wow the patient when you meet the patient, when you meet them in a party. You want to wow the patient because of your website, because of your social media, because of the way you shake your hands, the way you look into their eyes, the way you speak. You want to wow them with your front, front desk, with your waiting room. You want to wow them with your first appointment, with technology, with scanners, with precision, with efficiency. You want to wow them when they come back to listen to your plan the way you present the possible new smile, the way you present the diagnosis, the way you present the problems and the solutions, the way you present your financial proposition, you want to wow them. And you want to wow them the way so many times that you create case acceptance at the highest level possible. So this is what we call the wow effect. It goes all the way up to case acceptance. And of course, after case acceptance, we want to keep wowing the patient during the treatment because we want the patient to become a huge fan at the end of the journey so the patient can refer even more people to us. So wow effect is huge. Everything is wow effect. In everything we do, even outside our dental office, in life, we want to do good for people we want to wow people with our behavior, with our ethics, with our attitude, with our quality. This is wow effect. Now, when it comes to wow effect, the most famous piece of the wow effect journey is the motivational mock-up. That's how the wow effect name came. The way we do the mock-up and the way we present the mock-up, that the patient looks at the mock-up and says, wow, that's why we call it the wow effect. Now, when we talk about the mock-up, we have two mock-ups. We have the technical mock-up that we do after case acceptance, and we have the motivational mock-up that we do before case acceptance. So the name of the mock-up depends on our goal with the mock-up. Everything that we want to do before case acceptance is to be able to design better smiles, Treatment plan better the case and sell the case. Three case acceptance strategies are to design, plan, and sell. So the motivational mockup is part of the design, plan, and sell piece. If that is the goal, that mockup is called the motivational mockup. If you do a mockup in a patient that is already under treatment, that already accepted the treatment, this is not a motivational mockup anymore. We call it a technical mockup. And why do we do technical mockup? We do technical mockups to technically communicate to the patient, to check if that is exactly the design that the patient wants, to communicate better with the technician, to communicate better with the specialist, to guide our procedure. We can do a mockup to guide a gingival plastic. We can do a mockup to guide our preps. So the technical mockup has technical intentions. The motivational mockup has motivational intentions. So the smile test drive is how we call the motivational mockup. Is another name for motivational mockup. It's an emotional experience to show to the patient 
before they decided if they want yes or no the treatment, we do the motivational mock-up before that. So they look at that amazing possibility and that increases the chance of the patient accepting the case. So this is what we call the motivational mock-up, the smile test drive experience, the emotional smile test drive experience, that it's part of emotional dentistry strategy, that is part of the pre-case acceptance strategy. Oh, big one. <laughs> so what I gather, uh, what I'm gathering from, for, from you since the beginning is, uh, for all the viewers, it is the facially uh, guided mock-up. All what Christian does is as per the face, before the arrival of the coachman era, we used to work on a stone model without the face into consideration and we used to do a hand wax up, which many times did not match the face of the patient when we gave the test drive to the patient. So this was the major difference what Dr. Coachman did. I think that was the game changer for everybody in the industry. Good. So let me take you, to, uh, Christian, before that, let me say thank you to Dr. Salil Natekar for inviting more than 50 dentists to watch the program. I could see a list of names on the comments box, you know. I first thought that's a question, but it's not a question. He's invited 50 plus friends of his, you know. Uh, a small thing for all of you, uh, if you can start watch parties, which I forgot to announce because I am not of that era, but I learned this from the young generation. Uh, please start watch parties after the program so more and more dentists can attend and benefit out of this program, part one and part two both. But so let's move, Christian, the next question, which is uh, uh, DSG is so special. By now, many must have understood. Uh, many uh, already are following it, I'm sure about it, but there is this. Uh, sir, where all can we, so so why do we do DSD? Uh, why why do we have to do it for, uh, should we do it for a patient who calls up and says, uh, I want to do have DSD done with you? Or should we have this experiment of, uh, uh, say, at least a motivational mock-up or at least uh, uh, the first step of showing the before after simulation to a patient to begin with only? So example, I don't have a practice what people most of them say I don't have a practice where patients come in for a smile design I have normal patients how can I convert my normal patients into a proper full-blown digital smile design case a patient with just a molar pain if I can show him a simulation and then if I can if he agrees to go further and I can show him a smile mock-up and motivate and create that wow factor and if the patient gets can the patient get motivated into bigger treatments like, you know, uh, senior citizens going for ortho or cases of implants or cases, only any big case for that matter. How would DSD help me in that? So there's two parts of this, of the, uh, there's two parts in the answer of this question. Okay. Uh, there's two reasons to do DSD. Reason number one is to transform your dental office into what you want the, your dental office to become. So you use DSD strategies and ideas, not because your dental office today needs or your patients today need, is because you envision the dental office of your dream and DSD has the strategies to help you transform your office into the office of your dream. That's, that's one part, right? The other part is that as soon as you are where you want, that's the second part of why DSD is to use because when you when you have a vision that you want to have a dental office that is a smile design dental office that rehabilitates smiles. If you want to become a smile rehabilitator, if you don't have plans of becoming a smile rehabilitator, DSD is not for you. Uh, you know, if, if you love doing single molars, if you love doing uh, uh, simple dentistry. Uh, DSD is not for that. You know, DSD is a marketing, business, management, clinical and technical strategy for dental offices that want to become smile rehabilitation offices. So to have a smile rehabilitation office, you need to attract patients that need smile rehabilitations. Uh, so after you have, uh, you are prepared, what you need to do is that every patient that comes into your office you need to do a simple diagnosis, meaning is this a DSD patient or not? Uh, what means a DSD patient? Means a patient that 
deserves a better smile. A patient that deserves a better smile because the patient wants, or even if the patient doesn't envision because you see the possibility and you know how to present and maybe change the patient's mind and motivate the patient to start wanting a better smile. So it's either because the patient wants a better smile or because you have the skills to show the patient and make them want a better smile. Now, uh, of course, you need to have a strategy to attract the right patients, to attract the right patients. And uh, then you need to use the DSD methodology to actually treat the patient, to design and plan and convince and perform dentistry. So uh, these are the two main, main reasons why DSD is to transform your office into your dream office. And as soon as you're there, to uh, transform your patient's smile into your patient's dream smile. Perfect. So for the listeners, since I have a long, uh, been a long time with Christian, what he also means is like this. A question which is very commonly asked to me is, sir, I don't do porcelain veneers. So what is, there is no use of DSD to me. Or if I do DSD, do I have to learn porcelain veneers also? So now you must have understood what Dr. Coachman just said. What he said was he's actually gone one step further. Instead of being just a smile designer, he's now a smile rehabilitator. That's a, that's a much bigger game in dentistry, what we are talking about. So now example, uh, yesterday one dentist called me and said, sir, but I do only all on four implants and I'm only into implantology. So I don't know whether I should benefit from tomorrow's program. So you must have got it just now that all on four is actually full mouth rehabilitation. Yes. A complete is actually full mouth rehabilitation. Comprehensive. So that comprehensive yes. treatments. Comprehensive treatments, implant rehabilitations, veneers is just one one uh, type of treatment that can benefit from the. Uh, it's exactly the word smile rehabilitation. If you're gonna do, if you want to to uh, give back to somebody a better smile, it doesn't matter if it's only with ortho, only with composite, only with veneers, ortho plus veneers, gingival plasty ortho and veneers. Gingivoplasty, ortho, and crowns, ortho, implants, only implants, all on four, dentures, removable dentures. If you only do removable dentures, this is one of the best smile businesses in the world, dentures. If you want to become the best denture office or if you want to become a better denture office, if you want to wow your patients when you deliver dentures, you need this methodology. You need this workflow. You can... You know, you can differentiate yourself. You can be just one more doctor doing dentures out there, or you can become the doctor and the best doctor rehabilitating smiles through better dentures. Perfect. And so I guess you are Rajiv, rehabilitating smiles, aesthetics is just a piece. Rehabilitating smiles means rehabilitating health, rehabilitating bite, rehabilitating biology, rehabilitating function rehabilitating the structure, rehabilitating the systemic connection, rehabilitating uh, the balance, the posture of the patient, uh, rehabilitating uh, uh, or uh, improving the airway, improving quality of living, you know, in, improving life and well-being in general. This is smile rehabilitation. It's not six veneers, cosmetic, superficial Perfect. treatments. A complete holistic approach, absolute holistic. Good. So we have five more minutes before we entered into question answer. Uh, a very quick, simple answer for this. What is required to do if I want to do DSD other yeah. than, of course, learning it? What all do I need to do? Because I have heard that you need to have a DSLR camera. You need to have this. You need to buy this. You know, is there a DSD software? So right. just simple things, what you need to just start after you actually learn it and how easy it is. So learning is very easy. Learning nowadays, we have the whole program online. So if anybody can become a DSD expert by learning online. That's that's a given. Now, uh, after you learn the basics, I, I want to give a very down to earth answer here, okay? Uh, and I know the reality in India, the financial reality, because I'm from Brazil, so it's very similar. 
life is tough uh conditions are tough a competition is huge money is short uh and that's reality you know that's that's where we live so remember the five pillars of dsd design better plan better present better perform better and and promote better so how can i'm going to give five tips for you to start using one little piece of each one of the five pillars tomorrow without technology whatsoever without nothing with whatever you have with whatever you have in the middle of nowhere in the countryside without any financial asset you can still do this okay so design better if you have a smartphone if you have a smartphone allow yourself a few minutes to take facial pictures of your patient and allow yourself to take a video of your patient and allow yourself to spend a few minutes looking at the patient's face looking at the video looking at their smile only with that you will already improve your diagnostic wax up old school diagnostic wax up if you want to go a little further print this picture if you don't have a laptop print the picture take a pencil and draw over the midline and the smile curve and check what is right and what is wrong what needs to be changed and then translate this to your wax up translate this to your denture setup and you are already a better smile designer is that simple facial pictures with your phone you need a smartphone that's all you need so this is on facial analysis you, you facial and if you want to improve go to our website for free we have more than 200 articles explaining how to look at faces how to analyze faces how to transform your PowerPoint and Keynote into a dental software, how to draw the lines, how to translate the lines to the, the, the model, the stone model, and how to do better wax-ups, and how to test drive this wax-up in the mouth. What do you need to do that? So my question is back to everybody that is listening. If there's no need for any money to do this, why are you not doing this already? That is my question. Okay, so this is how you take advantage of pillar number one, how to become a better facial analyzer and a better smile designer without nothing, zero investment, okay, zero investment. Now, number two, number two is planning better. How can you take advantage of the DSD ideas to diagnose better and plan better without having to buy any fancy technology? All you need is what I mentioned. You need Dropbox and you need WhatsApp. It's for free, okay? It's for free. So what you need to do is to understand who is your team. Modern dentistry alone doesn't exist. You need to build a team. That doesn't cost money. You need to have a smile designer on your team, an orthodontist, a periodontist, and a restorative dentist. Four, that's it. You talk to these friends, you create a team, and you tell them that from now on, every patient, you're going to take the facial DSD pictures and the videos. You're going to draw the lines. You're going to share the lines on Dropbox. And you're going to message them on WhatsApp. And you're going to spend a few minutes, 5, 10, 15 minutes, to brainstorm about the case. And I can guarantee to you that by utilizing this that we call asynchronous communication, and there's an article about this on the website for free as well, you can read it, you can start using it, and you can start making better decisions for your patient. It requires zero money, it requires few minutes per case, and you become a better diagnostician and a better treatment planner by communicating as a team through Dropbox and WhatsApp, period. That's number two. Number three, how to become a better treatment presenter, okay? All you need, again, is your phone. You need your phone, you need a wax up, and you need a mock-up. And then you need to take the pictures of your patient and spend a few times to make drawings to explain why they need what they need. If your patient needs orthodontics, don't tell them they need orthodontics. Draw, make drawings to explain why they need it. If they need orthodontics, because with ortho, you can prep less their teeth, make drawings to explain how much enamel they will save. And don't try to convince them with words, convince them with images. 
starting with the image of the mock-up. Take a picture of your patient without the mock-up, put the mock-up, take a picture with the mock-up, and put the picture side by side beautifully and present to them the beautiful before and after of the mock-up and then the beautiful drawings of why they need gingivoplasty, why they need ortho, why they need longer teeth, why they need to widen their art, why they need to change their midline, why they need to open the vertical, why they need a better overbite, overjet. Translate your plan into drawings. That's number three. That's number three. You need no money whatsoever to implement these DSD ideas tomorrow morning. And finally, number four. Number four is to perform. If you want to use DSD ideas and you don't have any technology, all you need to do is to try to perform clinical procedures respecting the wax up. That means what? That you're gonna take your wax up as your starting point because that was what you approved with your team of four. Ortho, your technician, your ortho, your perio, and your respirator. Your, the 14 players, at least four. You can make it bigger. 14 players, right? So when you sell that wax up, when the patient buys it, you take that wax up and you tell the team, look, now we need to use our best skills to actually do the crown lengthening, the tooth movement, the restoration, to look as similar as possible to that. So there's many guides that we can do. We can do a silicone guide, we can do vacuum trays, we can guide gingivoplasty, we can control the orthodontic movement from time to time, check and compare with the wax up. We can do silicone index with the technician. We can translate the wax up into provisional and try to copy paste into the final restorations and do what we call guided dentistry without any digital, without any technology. Now, these were four tips for you to start tomorrow with zero investment, simple, effective, solutions for you to do. If you want to take one step further, if you really want to become different and special, you just need an intraoral scanner. If you're going to buy something, buy an intraoral scanner, and then you can take these four things to a completely different level. But you need to, again, buy a scanner and use the scanner in a smart way to take advantage of these four things, right? To take advantage of these four things. And if you do a good job, on these four things, then you deserve to do five. And five is marketing. Five is telling the world that you're special because you're doing one, two, three, and four. That's where we lack. Good. So all those who are listening, buying an intraoral scanner, I've been shouting all these years about it. The beauty of our country is you don't probably have to buy it also. It's available on the rent in India. So initially buy it on, take it on the rent, start using it, go the digital way, earn your money, and then one day buy it, use it for your clinic and rent it out to your friends and make the money, you know, or, and earn yeah. the money for the scanner very I fast. So the, the, gateway. the gateway is to outsource, rent and outsource, rent yes. and outsource. Make yes. other people pay for the technology and just use the technology, take advantage of it. So outsource to your lab, rent the scanners, do something, but don't miss the opportunity to start implementing these ideas. Some people are asking here, Rajiv, in what website they can find information. For yes. information on our, uh, on our uh, online uh, courses and on all the articles. Yes, I will send everything. everything. I'm announcing that just now. So good. So before we proceed, let me tell you what we are going to cover in part two before we take question answers for today. In part two, we will be covering on uh, short how to do DSD with the DSD app concept, which is very, very easy and uh, very reasonable. And it, it, it's one thing which you should start using. Uh, and I think uh, app is on the iPad and now it will be, I think, available even on iPhone. So very easy to use. Then we will also talk about applications of DSD in different parts of dentistry, like DSD Invisalign, the big thing in the world of orthodontics. So yesterday, one orthodontist called me, sir, what is there for me in DSD? Well, friend, there is enough. There is, I think orthodontist is the number one branch, according to me, which can benefit because of DSD. And DSD Invisalign is one big thing. Same way DSD dentures, DSD prosto, DSD perio, it's there in everything. So we'll talk about that. 
And the last thing we will talk about what's new in dentistry next time, DSD Natural Restorations, DSD Smile Donator, in short, of course, DSD Injectables and these type of things. And the last question, second part I'll ask you, Christian, is what is the future of DSD? Because in 10 years you have come from this to this, I cannot foresee what you would be 10 years from now. And I want to vision it. I'm giving you a week's time to vision it out. What, where would you be with DSD or maybe something else 10 years from now? Good. So thank you, everybody. And I will hand over to Anand and uh, Abhishek to ask you some questions. And then I will come back to say a formal thank you. Uh, Abhishek, yes. yes and Anand. Yes, thank you, Christian, for the... You're reading the questions. Please ask the relevant yes. she has already not spoken about. We have exactly 10 minutes. Okay. Thank you, Christian, for the wonderful insight about the software. Uh, most probably, I will also be the very happy to use it. And it gives me a belief that DSD can change the patient's life. DSD can change our practice in a different level altogether. Okay. We have a question from Dr. Sanket Shah. What is the best way to do motivational mock-up in subtractive cases? Okay, so this is a common question. If uh, the motivational mock-up is a mock-up that we do before the patient accepts the treatment, that means that is a mock-up that needs to fit to the pre-op situation of the patient. So the motivational mock-up is uh, mandatory an additive markup, right? So the question is, if the patient's teeth are flaring out, are out of position, and the case is subtractive, meaning that to improve the patient's smile, we need to either do ortho, or we need to trim down their teeth, or we need to do crown lengthening, so we need to remove tissues, hard or soft tissue, right? So this is a subtractive case. Can we still do a motivational markup in a subtractive case? And the answer is yes. Because the motivational markup doesn't need to be the ideal design. Uh, the ideal design will be used to guide the treatment plan and to guide the technical markup and to guide the restorations and to guide the, all the appliances that we're going to do to treat the patient. What we do is that based on the ideal design, we're going to classify the patient into additive or subtractive. If the case is subtractive, we're going to take that ideal design and we're going to modify that ideal design, usually growing the teeth to cover whatever is necessary to be able to have a mock-up even on, on a subtractive case. So, yes, many motivational mock-ups, they are bigger than they should. And that is not a problem because from a social distance, the way we take the pictures and the way we teach people how to show the mock-up, you can find an angle that even a markup that is slightly too big still looks good enough for the patient to look at those images and say, wow, this is looking very cool. That's the reason why on the motivational markup presentation, we never start by giving a mirror to the patient. Because if you give a mirror, the patient will look rationally to the markup and will criticize the markup. What you wanna do is to take pictures of the patient and select the ones that are looking great even knowing that the mock-up is big, but on the picture, the mock-up doesn't look big. It looks great. And this is the picture that you're going to show first. So you create the emotional connection. And afterwards, you explain the patient that it's a subtractive case, that you need ortho, that you need this, that you need that. So you're not going to hide anything. You're not going to lie. It's just the process that we do to create that wow effect first and then explain afterwards what needs to be done to treat the patient. Okay. Quickly, just to add, a subtractive case in common language in dentistry, the most common case is proclination of teeth. Next question. Abhishek, I have a question. Yeah, so I have a question for Krishan. Krishan, there is a question from Dr. Amit Sadwani. His question is, the major setback for an operator is experiencing a difference between the simulation stage and the delivery. So how can we minimize the difference between the simulation and the actual definitive restoration? How can we minimize the difference which is coming in? Yeah. Thank you. Another very good question. Uh, this was a common, uh, a common comment in the past, you know, uh, doing a smile simulation 
it's challenging uh, uh, because I can do a beautiful simulation, but then if I don't deliver, the patient will complain. So the first thing is that uh, the big difference between smile simulations today and in the past is that smile simulations in the past were just a gimmick, were just uh, like a little game. They they were they, they were uh, a visual thing, and there was no continuation. You couldn't do anything with that image. Today, a 2D smile simulation can be translated precisely into a 3D project, a 3D digital design. It means first that if you do a smile simulation, you can do a mock-up that is identical, not similar, identical to the simulation. Now, if you do a 3D project and you do a mock-up that can be identical to the simulation, you can also do a crown lengthening guide digitally that copies exactly the simulation and allows the periodontist to cut the bone and the tissue, respecting the simulation and creating a post crown lengthening outcome that looks very similar to the simulation. You can also generate guides for implants. You can generate guides for bite uh, vertical augmentation. You can generate guides for prognostic surgery. You can generate and translate the simulation into a 3D design and translate this into Invisalign and do orthodontic movements that respect that simulation. You can do uh, translate that 3D project into CAD CAM and mill and print restorations that are identical to the smile simulation. You can design a denture that is identical to the smile simulation. So the gap in between an initial simulation and the final outcome is getting smaller and smaller. And even though it's not identical because biology is never mathematics, then come the second part that is the explanation to the patient. When we do simulations to the patient, 2D and 3D, we explain to the patient is not a matter of identical. It's a matter of increasing the chances to be more similar. So when people tell me, I don't do a good provisional because if I do a good provisional, then my finals will not be as good and the patient will complain. This is, this is a horrible philosophy of working. We improve the plan and we improve the prototype and we improve the simulations and we explain to the patient, look, I can do no simulation if you want and let's see what happens at the end. Or I can do the simulation and I can use the best technology to increase the chances, I'm not promising, to increase the chances that my final outcome will be more similar than the simulation. What do you prefer? You prefer to go to a dentist that doesn't do simulations and doesn't guarantee anything, or you prefer a dentist that is taking the risk of doing the simulation, committing to the simulation, and really bringing the team on board and using the technology to bring these two things as close as possible without promising that it's gonna be identical. You choose the dentist, which one you prefer? Dr. Coach. <laughs> I have my answer. <laughs> Abhishek. A question from Dr. Prashant Palni. I have an iPad bought for this purpose. Tried to lot to get online course, but somehow could not get it online. Done a course with Dr. Rajiv sir a few years back and want to update myself. How can I get online course? Yes, send the details uh, on the number below and we will send you all. The email will arrive in two days time. But, you know, digital, if you go digital smile design.com, everything. Yes, John's email will be forwarded. You know, Christian, there is a suggestion from Dr. Sanket Shah. Instead of calling it as DSD, you should call it as DLD, digital life design. The way you have been describing it, it seems to be a life changing thing. And I totally agree with this. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. We do. Thank you. We, are, we are very proud of our course, uh, our DSD residency, uh, this four day course that now it's completely available online. Uh, it is, you know, people tell us that and makes us very proud that people tell us that is a life changing experience beyond dentistry. And that's what we try to do. It is, it is. I can vouch for it. Aslam Inandar can vouch for it. Sachin Shah can vouch for it. And Manish Chitnis can vouch for it. Because all four of us have been, you know, continuous touch with Christian on these courses. 
Any question you have? Okay. What is the role of CAD CAM dentistry and DSD concept in everyday practice? So CAD CAM is just, uh, you know, from, from all the pillars, you know, when you come to executing the fourth pillar, performing, uh, that's actually digital dentistry, performing digital dentistry, the restorative part is done through CAD CAM technology. So uh, digital design and digital manufacturing. So it's it's a must. Yeah. Nowadays, 100% of all the restorations that we do, 100% of all the restorations that we do in every single DSD clinic all over the world are CAD CAM manufactured. And there are a few questions about invasive line. I think that will be answered in the next session, right? Next session, yeah. Anything for that next session? One uh, thing from one doctor, I just keep, forgot her name. She says that since Dr. Coachman is a sixth generation dentist, it's obvious that it is in his DNA. <laughs> it's a Dr. disease. Was saying that. It's a genetic disease. <laughs> it's a genetic disease. <laughs> <laughs> but anything more? If uh, not, I will take one for a minute. Yes, sir. Please, please continue. Please. Good. So with this, I think we will meet. Uh, we are meeting again tomorrow. Tomorrow, I have a special lecture for women dentists and uh, women dentists and their problems and their issues and their dilemmas. And I don't know why women dentists selected me to talk on that. It's going to be very interesting, hilarious. A laughter show, I promise. Uh, men, uh, you are advised not to attend, if, especially if your spouse is a dentist. Okay, if your spouse is not a dentist, no problem. And if you have a mother-in-law, please make her attend the program. I'll ask her exactly at what time the mother-in-law should go to the kitchen. So tomorrow program at 4 p.m. on the same platform, WDA. And Christian, you and Nicoli can also join in for a change. It would be fun. It would be absolute fun. And uh, thank you, Christian, for today. And uh, that's, I think, perfect timing. 10.35 uh, time. And uh, we meet again Next Thursday, 11th of June, 6 p.m. Madrid time, 9.30 p.m. India time. Perfect. Good. See you. All those who have any queries, there is a number below, which is my WhatsApp number. You can send any more queries. I can forward it to Dr. Coachman and get the answers for you. If you want to know more about DSD, more about the courses or any online programs, visit my website and send a request with your email ID so that I can forward Christian's brothers and managers John's email to all of you regarding the details of your upcoming online course. And so, yes. Question. Did you guys record the session? Oh, yeah, of course. It will be on, on the WDA platform for seven days. And it will be on the website for share, the... Can you share the video with me? Of course. It will be shared with you also. Yes. It will Please be done by... Whenever Dr. you can. Anna. Yes, yes, immediately. It will be on YouTube also. It will be on my website. You can put it on www.digitalsmiledesign.com also everywhere. And we will keep uh, doing watch parties for the whole week. Fantastic. So the number goes really high. You know, a normal lecture at WDA reaches around 12,000. A good lecture, 50,000. And a mind-boggling one can reach even 1 lakh dentists. One lakh. Group. One lakh. We that's, have that's seen uh, many lectures in the post have touched one lakh views. One? You know, that's 100,000. 100,000. One lakh 100, views. 100,000 100, dentists wow. watching it. So that, yes. that's really amazing. Yes. We need the numbers afterwards. Yes. So, yes. WD, on your behalf, I will say thank you to Dr. Christian for giving his time. I don't have to say all these words to him because it's <laughs> on of that I'm saying them. <laughs> but cheers. Have a great evening. Yes. Thank you, everybody. See you next week. Regards to everybody at the DSD Planning Center, Francis, John, Nicoli, and the whole family, and Maria, everybody. I will. I will. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.